You hear us now? Alison, can you hear us? Yeah, I got you. I always let you go first, so I won't put that pressure on you. I'll go for someone else today, if that's okay. <laughs> no, you don't like it. <laughs> uh, good to see you. We've got Ange here. Gabriel, would you like to go first? A couple of questions each, as ever, please. Thanks. No problem. Hi, Ange. How are you getting on? Yeah, good, mate. Apparently, I'm not the one under pressure. It's you guys, so go for it. <laughs> ah. Yeah, there we go. Um, right, we'll just start with a, a fitness squad. How is everyone? How's how's Hitate? Yeah, he's good. He's uh, he's trained all week and uh, he's fine. He's available. As I said last week, he, he did a bit of work, but we just felt with the game being on the artificial, it wasn't wise to bring him back. So um, so he's good and available. Everyone else from last week is also uh, all clear. You made a great start to the season so far up against Hearts this weekend, obviously finished third last season. Would you say it's the toughest test you've had so far? They're all tough tests. Um, you know, Aberdeen, the first one was tough. Uh, away to Ross County and, and Kilmarnock uh, last week had its challenges. Every game is, uh, you know, it's got its own uh, obstacles for us to overcome. Yeah, like I said, we've had a solid start to the season. Our performances are slowly uh, improving. Um yeah, as I said, this is a period where we don't have a lot of games, but uh, are able to train um, yeah, a bit more than we usually do. So we're putting a lot of work into the guys during the week. And uh, yeah, I think that's helping our, our performances improve. What did you make of Hearts uh, and in, in Europe, obviously coming back from, from Switzerland? Yeah, I think, um, you know, you can see they've strengthened from last year, just squad wise, they look a lot. Uh, stronger, I think. You know, you look at their um, side last year and had a fantastic year, but kind of relied on a core group of players. I think, obviously, with uh, with European football this year, they've had to uh, <clears throat> expand their squad. And you, know, you even saw last night; I think they got an injury early, but <clears throat> you know, had had to um, had the players to replace them. So, um, I think with with Europe, it's always um, I, I've always seen it as a as a positive experience for the players. Um, who participate in it, and um, you know, I think they would have got uh, they're still in the tie, so they would have got some belief out of last night, and you know, give us a tough test uh, on the weekend. Mentioning strengthening squads, Celtic linked with Hags Karanovic um, this week about a, a apparent move for for the winger. What can you tell us about about that player and if he's moving to Parkhead? Um, I think we've been linked with a player every time I've done one of these. Um, you know, when and if. Uh, we announce it, we'll announce it. But um, as I said all along, we're we're agile. The right, we're looking for the right person to bring in. If that right person's available and we can do a deal, we'll do a deal. But um, nothing's really changed on that front. Is the winger slash attacker, you know, sort of the priority at the moment, or is it that just a case of whoever's? Again, I've been pretty consistent. Just check my press conferences. I've said, you know, if we can get a player who can play in a variety of positions, um, it's just got to be the ideal player. Uh, you know, our, our recruiting this year has been around making it, our squad stronger and, and more robust um, compared to sort of last year. And, you know, if you look at the players we've brought in, that's what they've added to our squad. And, and again, so it's not a specific area as such in terms of um, position. It's more, you know, if we can find a player or, or a couple of players who can play more than one position, I think it'll it'll help us. Thanks, Ronnie. Gavin? And, uh... Hearts have obviously signed an, another Australian player in the summer. Um, they got a few, three in now, I think. Um, and there's quite a few teams in the in the league have, have gone to Australia or, or signed Australian players. What, what have you made of the kind of influx of Australian players? Is it quite exciting for folk back home as well to watch the, the, the this league now as well? Yeah, I think so. I think it's um, it's great for Australian football. Um, you know this, yeah, you know, this league. Uh, you know, it's a good league for, for, for I think, Australian players. It, it gives them a real sort of stepping stone into Europe. Um, and it's a tough league. It's a competitive league. And, uh, you know, I think, uh, particularly, say, with Hearts, I think Cammy Devlin coming in last year and doing really well probably encouraged them to look there again. Um, there's good value there. And certainly with Nathaniel and, uh, you know, Kai Rolls, who I've known for quite a while, <clears throat> good players, you know, good characters. Um, so... And it's good to see, um, you know, other Australians, uh, um, you know, in the league now. I think they can add something to this league, but also they'll get challenged themselves to to perform because, um, as I said, it's a pretty competitive league. Is that was that always the case in Australia? Was the Scottish league viewed as a a good place to maybe a platform for a lot of players to come and play here? And, and yeah, I mean, 
I mean, there's always been a strong Australian influence here, not just as a platform, but to come here and make an impact. We had our own sort of, you know, with with obviously Tommy being here and, um, you know, Big Dukes have been, has been through here. Jackson Irvine came through here. Um, so, you know, and, and even at other sort of clubs, Ryan McGowan is now back. Um, you know, there's always been a strong Australian influence. I think, like I said, there's some parallels there with, with Australian leagues. And I think... One thing about Australian footballers, um, Australian sportsmen in general, they're, they're really strong characters um, in the sporting sense. And uh, with the league being so competitive here, I think it'd be a good fit. Cheers. Alison? Ange, can I just ask you about Alex Burnaby? Obviously, reports this week about him being um, in trouble with the police. What is the latest or what, what can you see about that? Yeah, there was an incident early in the week and uh, now it's uh, processes that are taking place uh, both externally and internally and when they come to a conclusion, we'll, uh, we'll, uh, we'll take the appropriate measures. Will he be in the squad for Sunday? Yeah, he's training and he's available. Cheryl? Hi, sorry. And um, what are the club with the players that might be going out the door before the window closes, like Mikey Johnson and Albion Ayeti? Yeah, again, uh, without talking about specific players, because ultimately they're all sort of, you know, individual cases. Um, you know, um, it's about trying to find opportunities for these guys to play um, if they're not going to get opportunities here. And, yeah, with some of it, it's... It's it's got to be driven by themselves as well, you know. If they want to find somewhere to to, to get more opportunities, we'll certainly help in that regard. So just um, you know, there's still uh, ten days or so open in the in the transfer window, and um, you know, particularly say around Mikey, Mikey, I'm really keen to get some some game time. I, you know, I still think Mikey's a, an outstanding talent. He just you know hasn't been able to get a good run of games, and I think a different environment for him where he can, I think he can start realising the potential we all know he has, um, but. You know, he's training well. They're all training. Everyone's, you know, uh, part of the training group. And, um, you know, like I said, if opportunities arise over the next 10 days for players, we'll, we'll definitely look at it. And um, as far as uh, the Champions League draw that's coming up next week, spoke to Callum McGregor earlier in the week and he had mentioned that Real Madrid was a name that he would like to see come out the hat. Do you have any ideas of any big, big name clubs that you would like to see at Celtic Park? I think uh, irrespective, we'll see some big name clubs at Celtic Park. So um, no, I'll uh, I'll defer to the skipper on that one if that's what he wants. Um, I'm usually pretty good at draws. I'll get usually get the most difficult one available. So um, that certainly fits his criteria. Thanks, Joe. Uh, Joe. And how you doing, Joe McKenna from the Homeboys Podcast? Uh, good joke. Um, Harry Kuehl did a short but interesting interview with Fox Sports in the last week and he backed up a statement you made last season when you spoke about learning and growing from the backroom staff around you. So never standing still in your own thoughts of the game, essentially. Do you feel you've benefited as a coach and manager yourself, being with the current coaching team around you, including Harry? Yeah, I think I'll, I mean, it's, I think it's the reason why um, you know, it's pretty well chronicled that I, I kind of don't take a crew of people around with me because um, I think every environment I've been in, I've, I've worked with different people and new people, and uh, I think you always learn. Um, you know, just people having different sort of personalities and characters, different upbringings, um, you know, different knowledge around the game. Uh, for me, um, you know, f- whilst you know, I've been doing this for a very long time, um, yeah, I'm always looking for areas where uh, I can expose myself, like I said, to, to different kind of scenarios and different people so that I can continue my growth both as a, as a manager and as a person, you know, and I think that's the way you do it. So, you know, here, um, you know, as I said, I, when I came in, I kind of inherited um, most of the football staff, um, coaches and, and, and other staff. And, yeah, it's been great working with them and uh, I enjoyed working with them. And, um, like I said, it, it keeps me on my toes because, um, you know, if I sort of had a group of people who went around me as a coaching group, you know, I wouldn't have to convince them about what we're going to do. Whereas when I come in here, I had to sort of not just the players, but also the staff, get them to believe in sort of the football team I want us to be and the football I want to play. And, you know, I enjoy that challenge of, uh, you know, getting people to to believe in, in sort of the direction we're going to head. And you spoke about growth there. Uh, one player in particular I kind of want to make mention of, we're all a big fan of, is Greg Taylor. I've been a huge fan of Greg's f- for years now uh, because I think that 
main contributing factor recently to some of our successes has been Greg's tenaciousness. The fact that he just doesn't give up and he'll reset himself really quickly in a game. And I think he's always had that, right? And he came in for criticism in the past. Do you think now that he's unlocked something or is he just now in an environment and in a situation whereby his talents and, and his abilities are really thriving? Well, I think it's it's probably a combination of all those things. I think for every footballer, their, their, their football journey is, is not uh, is never sort of linear in that, you know, it just goes starts at a low base and finishes at a high base you've got your ups and downs and and sometimes you learn a lot from times where you know you have to struggle and as you said um if you don't have resilience and tenacity because at some point in your career you'll get tested for a lot of players it happens a lot of times in their careers it's your ability to to overcome that that allows you then you know, to take your, your football career to, on the upward trajectory, all of us, you know, all, all players want to take it. So, but, you know, I think too often, you know, players just think it's, as I said, it's just a smooth sort of ascent and it never is. You've got to go through your ups and downs. You've got to show resilience. You've got to convince people. You've got to prove yourself all the time. Um, that never changes. And, you know, with Greg, I mean, I've got my experience with Greg has only been over the last sort of, you know, 12 months and, you know, from the moment I arrived, he's he's probably you know he's one of the few that kind of uh, have stayed on. And <clears throat> you know, from the start, he was an eager learner. He, he was a hard worker at training, and and to me, they're the main sort of characteristics I, I learn, I look at for players. I, I think sometimes there's a misconception about sort of you know the kind of players that that people think fit into my system. I think there are you know, very few players that wouldn't fit into the kind of football that I want to play because there isn't a football I don't think on the planet doesn't want to play, you know, have the ball and be dominant and all those kind of things. But apart from their skill set, the key criteria is that they're coachable and, and that they, you know, which is part of their learning capacity and they are, that they're, they're resilient because it's it's a tougher road to take. And um, you know, Greg's got those, but, you know, the, the challenge for him now is to, to keep improving, you know, to keep, getting better to keep, you know, he's still a young man and, um, you know, there's still areas of his game he'll want to improve and I know he can. And um, my role and, and, you know, the the club's role is to make sure the environment keeps pushing all our players to be the best they can be. Tremendous. Thank you, Alex. Good luck for Sunday. Thanks, Joe. Thank you. Uh, Andrew? Hi, Ange. What sort of game are you expecting on Sunday? I think it's fair to see Hearts have more attacking options or more attacking team. Um, Do you expect them to come over... Come and have a go. Oh, look, I think irrespective of what we expect from the opposition, it's up to us to impose our game on it. I mean, every game is a bit of an arm wrestle where, you know, both teams, whatever their approach may be, will try and impose themselves. Our job is to make sure that, you know, we try and dominate the game in the areas we like to dominate, play the game in the areas we like to play. And if that happens, irrespective of you know, how the opposition set, sets up, then, you know, we can force um, their hand to, to to make changes. But um, as you said, they've got some, you know, obviously they've they brought in um, Shanklin this year and he's already scoring goals. Uh, Barry Mackay, um, Liam Boyce, they've got some good attacking options. They've brought Andrew Forrest in. So, you know, they're a threat up front. I thought they were a threat up front last year too, actually. You know, I thought they were, you know, and I think that's why they finished where they did. It wasn't a game style built around just, defending um so they had threats up front last year as well so yeah they got threats but again it's up to us to make sure that like i said we we dictate how the game's played and and for that to happen we've got to make sure we start with the right intent and intensity um particularly at home that that makes us hard to stop i think uh, most people are expecting a, a two horse race and i guess sunday would be a big indicator but can hearts challenge a season I don't really put a lot of thought into what other clubs' ambitions are, to be honest. Um, all we got to do is make sure that we, when we play against every opposition, like I said, we're the best we can be, and then uh, and then we kind of look after our own ambitions. I think, um, you know, from our perspective, it's really important that, uh, and I think we've shown that over the last sort of year and a bit, um, that you know, every opponent we treat the same way, you know, with the same respect, uh, irrespective of their own individual 